Hello, in this video, I want to show you a book that is free. That's right, this book is 100% free because it's so old. So I will leave a link in the description to a free version of this book that you can get on the internet. Uh, it's available for free, so anyone in the world can read this book and not spend any money. Also, what makes this book even cooler is it was written by a very famous math professor and mathematician, H.B. Phillips. So H.B. Phillips was a professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, so MIT. He was an MIT math professor for a very long time. Then he became the chair of the department. So he was like the boss of all of the MIT math professors. And he had a full career uh, at MIT. He taught for many years. He was very well liked by the students. He was a very good teacher. And he wrote several books as an avid collector of math books. I have, I think I have all of his books or almost all of his books. I think I might be missing one. So this one is called Vector Analysis and it's a book on vector analysis. There's a person's name here. I don't know who that person is. I believe this is called uh, like a book stamp or something like that. It has a name. I think it's book stamp. And some uh, older books have this. It was like a thing. Uh, I, guess, I guess back in the day people would, um, you know, they would put this stamp on their books. It was part of their collection. It's, it's kind of cool, right? I don't know if people still do this. I, I thought about doing it actually, like putting like a little math sorcerer thing on all my books. I don't know. So yeah, kind of cool. Maybe I should. Vector analysis. So back then, you know, a lot of people did it, right? They, they had these little things they would put on uh, their books. A part of their, of their reading libraries. Works of H.P. Phillips, Ph.D., published by John Wiley and Sons. This is cloth. So I have, I have all of these. Uh, wait, I don't think I have the geometry book. I don't think I have that one. So by the way, I'll leave a link in the description to the physical book in case I can find any copies in case you want to check it out. It might be kind of hard to get. Uh, it's out of print, but you can still look at it for free, and I'll leave that link as well in the description. Here you see it says, Professor of Mathematics, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Seventh printing. I got, I got to give this a whiff. I'm sorry. This is just like a classic. Ah, oh, what a piece of history. This is what life is all about. Look at this. Copyright 1933 by Henry B. Phillips. Wow. Wow. So old school. And this is the seventh printing, April 1946. Wow. That was so long ago, right? Let's take a look here at what he says in the preface. It is the object of this book to present vector analysis in the form that is required for work in theoretical electricity and hydrodynamics. For these subjects, what is needed is the analysis of vector fields and the study of the quantities which characterize each type of field. These quantities have essentially the same form and properties in whatever field they occur. Yeah, this is a really cool book. It is a little bit different than newer books. So when you start reading it, you're going to be like, whoa, this is very different from the book I use for my class. And I think that's a good thing. It'll give you a different perspective. You might not understand everything in the book, but honestly, when do you understand everything in any math book, right? It takes a lot of effort and time and practice and sacrifice. So this is more of like a book you can use to do some self-study with or maybe like supplement what you're doing in class. But I really think it's better suited for self-study. Elementary operations, so it talks about vectors, partial differentiation, so typically you would learn this today in a Calculus 3 course. Integration, again these are uh, multivariable things here, typically taught in Calculus 3, at least in the US. Some schools have Calc 4, and that's oftentimes where they visit like Stokes theorem and things like that. Some coordinate systems. You've got all kinds of systems here, not just the typical ones that you learn in Calc 3. Some other stuff here, electrostatic fields, really cool. Some interesting topics, right? Topics, again, you're not going to find in your typical calculus book. Laplace's and Poisson's equations. I believe that's how you say it, Poisson. Uh, Poisson means fish in French, I believe. If you speak French, please let me know, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Harmonic functions. I first saw harmonic functions in a course on complex analysis, actually. Scalar and vector potentials. Retarded potentials, and then linear vector functions. And let me just show you how the book reads so you can get an idea. Of course, you can go look at it. You can 
um, check it out for free or, or buy the book. I personally think it's better to own the physical book. I, I'm not a huge fan of ebooks, even though um, you know this is available in ebook. I just prefer the physical. If if you can afford it, it's definitely worth having. I got to give another whiff. I'm just sorry. Just ah, uh, I love this book. Elementary operations. The quantities of physics can be divided into two classes, namely those having magnitude only and those having magnitude and direction. A quantity characterized by magnitude only or magnitude and an algebraic sign is called a scalar. Thus, mass, time, density, coordinates are scalars. When units of measurement have been chosen, a scalar is represented by a real number and so is subject to all the laws of ordinary algebra. A quantity which has direction as well as magnitude is called a vector. So force, uh, velocity, and acceleration are illustrations. And here they have some vectors to represent those. So pretty cool. Um, the book has illustrations, as you can see, which is really cool for such an old book. Uh, the, the typesetting, like the words, are a little bit bigger than some of the other books. Notice there's a lot of space on the page. So I, I feel like it's like his notes. Basically, he took his notes and he turned them into a book, which is what most books come from, right? Professors write notes that they can follow in class. They teach the class a hundred times or whatever, uh, you know, a lot of times, and they revise those notes and turn them into books. So, so here you see some exercises. Problems. The exercises are very non-standard. They're different. Some of the stuff is really basic. Some of it is not. There's a lot of geometrical stuff. So again, different from modern books. Tons of exercises, as you can see. 50 50 something exercises. Then here's chapter two on, on partial differentiation. So solid book, uh, tons of exercises. Let's look in the back of the book, see what we find. So you've got an index here. The numbers refer to the pages, it says. So you have a nice little index with things here in the back. Yeah, really nice book. Really nice book. I gotta give it another way if you, oh, the divergence theorem. Look at that. That's cool. Really cool pictures, right? So. Ah, amazing. So I think if you're looking for a good book uh, on vector analysis that you can use to like self-study and read, I think this one's pretty good. You probably won't understand all of it. I mean, it's not like the easiest book in the world to read. It is an older book that was written for students who were attending MIT. So, you know, if you were, if you were an MIT, MIT student during this era, you know, chances are, you know, and you were studying this, you would have this man as a professor perhaps, right? H.B. Phillips. Um, could have been your teacher, right? Could have been your teacher back then. And uh, this is the book that you would have used for your class, which is pretty cool. You would have had homework probably, who knows, from, from, from the homework sections in this book. I imagined, uh, I can imagine that it can be very difficult, right? Reading the book and having to do assignments and turn them in, um, it's, it takes a lot of effort, especially uh, with this type of mathematics. Also, if you want to learn mathematics, I do have courses, they're on my website mathsourcer.com, so check it out. They're actually on the Udemy platform, but if you get them, please use the links from my website. I've lowered the prices, so when you use uh, my link, you should get a very, very low price. Again, mathsourcer.com. I've got courses on calculus, differential equations, algebra, etc. And if you found any value in this content, feel free to subscribe if you want to. Until next time, keep doing mathematics.